Good afternoon to everyone present here today and to all of those people tuning in from around the United States and the world. Class of 2021, we did it. In what has been an unprecedented year, we have all managed to graduate. We're all here today. Let's take a moment for that to sink in. I, I really want to take this opportunity to thank all the families, the friends, the faculty, and staff that have made this journey possible in the last four years. We could not have done it without your help and support. My name is Devon Sean Gautia, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this year's baccalaureate ceremony. For those of us that aren't very familiar with the baccalaureate ceremony, it was initially a religious service to honor the graduating class, but has since then evolved into a quieter, more reflective event that focuses on the student's personal growth and achievements. Usually at Grinnell College, this ceremony is held at the Herrick Chapel, and in some ways, it signifies the completion of a full circle in our life as Grinnellians. From the medallion ceremony before the first day of classes as first years of Grinnellians, to today, a day before commencement, we have really come a full circle. Um, but given this year's COVID-19 restrictions and the inclement weather in Iowa, um, we are all gathered here today in the field house. Um, nevertheless, we're super excited and happy to have this opportunity to you know, gather here to celebrate the graduating class and give faculty and student speakers a chance to say a few words. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to um, ask the commencement committee to stand up. <clears throat> we need... We need to all give them a round of applause for all the hard work that they've done over the past two months for making this event and commencement possible. Thank you so much for being a great group of students to work with. Um, it's an honor to be on this committee. I would now like to introduce the Grinnell College President, Anne Harris, who will coincidentally be attending her first baccalaureate ceremony. So it's the same for her as it, for, as it is for us. Um, so President Harris was born in Paris, France in 1969. And since then, she's you know, had quite a journey around the world. She's lived in Geneva, Switzerland, in Connecticut, North Carolina, Indiana, and Two years ago, she moved to Grinnell, Iowa. She got her PhD in art history at the University of Chicago. In fact, for those interested, she's um, in works of publishing a book that's due to come out in August. Um, it is at the University of Chicago that she met the love of her life, Michael McKenzie. Together, they have three children, Oliver, Iris, and Marlo. Um, President Harris is also an avid soccer fan, supporting the French national team and the Spanish club, Atletico Madrid, which in fact won the La Liga a few days ago. So I'm sure she's very excited about that. Um, she loves Grinnell, and she says that the last two years of her time here in Grinnell have been the most meaningful for her in her life. So, with that, it is my pleasure to welcome President Ann Harris to say a few words. Oh. Ivanj, thank you so much. And yes, go Atletico Madrid. Lots of worthy teams this year. Good afternoon, Grinnellians. It is my sincere honor and pleasure to welcome you to our 2021 baccalaureate celebration. As we prepare to celebrate our graduating students tomorrow, I would like to congratulate each member of the class of 2021 on behalf of our trustees, Dean Marsloff, and the Grinnell faculty and staff. 
Each of us shares your deep and well-deserved sense of pride and accomplishment. This afternoon, we will honor those students who exemplify the Grinnell spirit of service and commitment to community. We will present alumni senior awards to honor those student leaders to whom the class will continue to look for leadership as they become the newest members of the alumni community. We will present the Lorianne Schwab 95 Prize for community service to one student who has demonstrated exceptional service to the campus and local community. We will also announce honorary members of the class of 2021, members of the college community and community at large chosen by the class to be included among them for their service, friendship, and dedication. Before we begin, however, I want to acknowledge all of the parents, caregivers, and supporters in attendance through our live stream, and thank you for allowing your students to become a part of the Grinnell community. We are honored by the trust you've placed in us to provide them with an educational experience that will shape their lives and the communities they in turn will shape. I am humbled and inspired by the intelligence and determination of this class, and I congratulate them for creating the opportunities that led them to their graduation. A degree from Grinnell College does not come easy. Everyone knows this. The students we honor this weekend worked extremely hard to get here. They are deep thinkers who ask hard questions and seek answers through research, inquiry, and curiosity. They are committed, active, thoughtful, and mature citizens. They are unflinching in their resolve to take on the world's many challenges, challenges they did not create but are determined to overcome. With the dedication and hard work they've demonstrated over the past four years, I am confident in their ability to succeed. In their time here, they've taken on responsibility for their own futures. They've embraced the pursuit of knowledge not only for their own personal gain and joy, but as a means to create a better world. They've challenged the status quo. They've demonstrated a deep and abiding respect for diverse perspectives and global understanding and they've proven they are up to whatever tasks lie in front of them. I look forward to celebrating the success of these students for years to come. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Elaine Marsloff, the Bride McFarlane Professor of Science and Dean of the College. Thank you. Thank you, Pre President Harris, and I'd like to say greetings to all of our graduates, families, and friends who are joining us here today, some in the field house, many of you on our live stream. Thank you for being here this afternoon, and congratulations. Just, today is just such a wonderful day of celebration, despite the weather that has brought us inside here. Um, and I am so honored to be able to be here with you today. Um, and to have this opportunity to celebrate and reflect all of your accomplishments. I'm looking forward to all of the speakers today and the chance to celebrate the award winners and your honorary classmates. As I reflected on the last 15 months, as all of you were finishing your degree in a pandemic, I want to start by acknowledging that this was not the experience any of us planned or expected you to have. Nevertheless, in this time, I've watched all of you demonstrate your adaptability, your creativity, your resilience, and while I hope you never have to use these skills again in a pandemic, they will certainly serve you well in the future. Looking back on when you started at Grinnell, I was reminded when I talked to the mid-year graduates, I had reflected back on a list that Beloit College releases each year, admittedly my generation is the target audience, to help us understand and understand the experiences our incoming students bring, bring to us. And I chose a small selection to consider from the list released four years ago when all of you joined us here um, of things that are unique to your class. Um, there have always been emojis to cheer us up. You've always been searching for Pokemon, and ketchup has always come in green. Students prior to you had not had those experiences always in their, in their life. And then there's this one that really resonated with me. They may find their college syllabi longer than their reading assignments, a nod to the very detailed syllabi your professors have created for you to guide your learning experience here. Though I expect it is unlikely 
that in your actual experience, your syllabi have been longer than your reading assignments. <laughs> Finally, there was one more in this list um, of the Beloit College that particularly resonated with me, and students who've had me may, may recognize this one. And it said, the Mar Mars polar lander has always been lost. And that brings to me memories of exploration and knowledge gaining and, many of, and the many successful landings we've had on Mars since then. And those of you who have been in my classes or in meetings with me know that my cats are named after many of those landers. I have spirit, curiosity, opportunity, and then Rover is a little bit the odd one out. Um, they are no doubt disappointed that our, if you want, kind of hybrid virtual event today prevents them from attending. Um, you started your journey then at Grinnell, growing up with emojis, and with the Mars Polar Lander always having been lost, but successful exploration since then, and looking forward to post Grinnell, today is a nice opportunity to reflect back on our mission. And I just wanted to take the last words of our mission. The college aims to graduate individuals who can think clearly, who can speak and write persuasively, and even eloquently, who can evaluate critically both their own and others' ideas, who can acquire new knowledge, and who are prepared in life and work to use their knowledge and abilities to serve the common good. You started your journey and your experience in gaining these, these, these skills and these attributions that we're looking at in our tutorial program, the course that all of you took together, the only required course you take, engaging our curriculum, working closely with advisors and mentors who helped you identify and explore your passion to establish that critical framework for learning mentioned and so much in our mission and to aid you on that journey to become a critical thinker and learn to communicate clearly and compellingly both in written and oral form. And you finished the journey here today having completed your final collegiate papers and exams ready to continue your journey as a lifelong learner serving the common good. As you prepare to leave Grinnell, some of you virtually and some are here in Grinnell, many of you with the opportunity to spend only one term on campus in the last 15 months. The importance of place in our residential campus was on my mind as I prepared our remarks today. Um, the importance of place, all the more because we haven't had that opportunity to gather together in person. Your journey at Grinnell has been shaped by your experiences in the classroom, studios, labs, residence life, and other facilities in campus. This year, you engaged with your peers and faculty in a much changed format, a changed term length, but the classes and activities remain consistent with the value of the liberal arts. With so much of your journey and memories will be place-based, it is clear the importance of our structures, buildings, and physical gathering spaces as we look to returning to use those. At the same time, you demonstrated as Grinnellians your adaptability when those were removed from our ability to have those experiences together. I want to recognize as well, as, as your time at Grinnell has shaped you, you have also all left your imprint on Grinnell through your work with leadership in clubs and organizations, the Student Government Association, community leaders, educational policy committee members, and for those of you here today on the commencement committee, the important work you've done planning these last several days and final events and memories that you are creating together as a class. It is such a delight to get to gather with you to celebrate your achievements and your impact on Grinnell. I'm looking forward to our program today and the time for reflection and celebration that it offers us. Thank you all for all that you have done for Grinnell. Good afternoon. So I'd like to start with a story. <laughs> During my first week um, on campus, I auditioned for the Grinnell Singers um, with John Ramaray. And later that day, I found myself in the backyard of John and Karen Edwards' house, and I thought I saw the same man again. A couple of days later, when I was crammed in a small classroom in Muir's Cottage, uh, the same man waltzed into the room to introduce me and my peers, me and my classmates, to 10 Things I Hate About You as a means to introduce us to the world of Shakespeare. And it took me until that moment to realize that John Ramaram and John Garrison are actually two completely different people. <laughs> Dr. Garrison has 
has had a flourishing career and life much before his time at Grinnell. He came to Grinnell at the same time as us, August 2017. And in many ways, we feel like we've spent four years trekking along together, and we have. Um, the summer after my first year, it was only through his help that I was able to stay here because I couldn't go home that summer and engage in research as a, somebody who just finished their first year. And more importantly, I was able to attend my first ever concert in Chicago, and Dr. Garrison drove me there because uh, he was going to Chicago, number one, but also was doing a fellowship at the Newberry and tolerated me blasting Darren Chris um, on the car throughout that entire ride. So thank you, Dr. Garrison, for tolerating me. <laughs> um, so he is a mentor, guide, and friend, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And even though we are graduating tomorrow, in our hearts, Dr. Garrison, you are such a pillar of our specific class. We could not have done these four years without you. You inspire so many of us. Uh, you, you inspire me every day to be a better writer and person. Um, you inspire us to also win the Guggenheim one day. You show us that by leading by example that there is always a new limit, a new standard to be set. It is my great honor to present our first faculty speaker for today, pro professor of English and chair of peace and conflict studies, a trained ballroom dancer, um, and winner of the Guggenheim, Dr. John Garrison. Thank you, Ahon, for that generous introduction. And thank you to the class of 2021 for selecting me as one of your baccalaureate speakers. I am honored to share this stage with Dr. Manessa Cummins, someone who I have particularly admired since my arrival here on campus. It is especially meaningful for me to speak to you this year of all years. You are the class with whom I entered Grinnell College. Meeting some of you as first year students during my own first semester when I taught two sections of Introduction to Shakespeare. Having those conversations that always fascinate me. Asking how figures from the past and older stories take on new life when we look at them in retrospect and when we retell them in our own terms. My first semester here in 2017 seems so long ago now, partly because this past year a year which has really been a year and a half, and a year which seems like it's still not quite over, has been so dramatically odd. Time feels out of joint, to paraphrase Hamlet's own description of his emergence from university study into an uncertain world. Neither odd nor out of joint seem to capture fully the nuances of this strange time, this tail end of a college experience in the shadow of an epidemic. We won't have clarity about the right words and about those nuances, what all this will mean in the context of everything else that has happened and will happen until much later. But I have to say, now in the long shadow of retrospect, my own graduation moment in the 1990s strikes me as not that different from yours. That baccalaureate that many years ago at UC Berkeley was a day not unlike this one. It was raining, at least for part of the ceremony, and our graduating class was being addressed by one of our English professors, though not one with whom I'd had a class, the poet Tom Gunn. I can't remember what he talked about, but I do remember finding it soothing. Perhaps that's the best we can expect from memory, a feeling rather than a fact. And perhaps that's what we should want from memory anyway. My transition out of college represented an instant of possibility, but then as now, Expanded possibility for me so often coincides with anxiety, but also with maturing, with accepting the world as more complex than I believed it was, with sitting amidst increased uncertainty. Add to this that my own college graduation fell very much in the full swing of global pandemic. It was a time in the history of HIV and AIDS when long-time treatments seemed unreliable 
when it seemed to me like anyone in my community could be infected at any moment, while other people thought the virus was a hoax, or thought that the way they lived or what they believed would keep them from ever having to worry about the virus. Moreover, my graduation day came on the heels of the then governor of California vetoing Assembly Bill 101, which would have prohibited private employers from discriminating against employees because of their sexual orientation. It seemed to me that I was entering a markedly more troubling world than the one that had come before. Well, things ended up being not so dire. In a story far too long for today, I moved to a big city, worked on the front lines of community health, and advocated for equality for queer people. And later, even when I wasn't working in organizations overtly out to change the world, I still stuck by those things that I felt the world needed more of, listening before speaking, coming from a place of abundance, acknowledging that I can only start from where I am and that others are doing the best they can, acknowledging that the present moment can be messy and may not make much sense until we are in its wake. I think it is Viola in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night who says, O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. To the play's audience, she means, we'll have to wait till we get to the end of the plot to see how this whole mess will get sorted out. And to me, she also means, we need the coming respite of retrospect to have clarity on our experiences in the present, to see our now thrown into relief by what comes after. But that does not excuse us from being active in the present, to acknowledge our own responsibility to the future. I know you will all have a role to play in shaping the world that comes after this one, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you help create. Thank you. everyone, I'm Steph Dos Santos, and to begin, I would like to thank everyone for being here, either virtually or in person. Our first speaker, our first student speaker today is someone who has been a close friend of mine since I even started college. Um, as one of my first friends on campus, she helped me adjust to being a part of a new environment, which is not out of the ordinary for her. Her work in theater, social justice, and encouraging women in the computer sciences has shown how caring, unique, and most of all generous that she is. She has used what she has learned on campus to bring more comfort to incoming first years for the Grinnell Science Project. I, like many others, can say that she has greatly impacted their time at Grinnell. I am proud to introduce our first speaker, Obuchi Adekima. Thank you, Steph, for that introduction. Good afternoon to everyone here with me today in the field house. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who's streaming this event online. Class of 2021, we've written our last papers, taken our last exams, and finished our last projects. We're graduating tomorrow, but what does that even mean? Almost every day for the past eight months has felt the same to me. So, why is today different than any other day? Each of us has lost a lot in this past year. Some of us more so than others. Tomorrow is our graduation and whether you'll be walking across the stage on campus or watching virtually, it's okay to admit it will not be the commencement any of us expected. And it's okay to feel cheated or disappointed, or angry, or sad. But it's also okay to feel joyful. In the midst of a global pandemic, it can feel selfish to celebrate anything. Some of us have been privileged enough to have a smooth adjustment to online classes and social distancing. And some of us have been living in incredible isolation and 
suffered the loss of our family, friends, and community members. Whether you've thrived in quarantine or crawled to the finish line, you have made it to graduation. And you have a reason to celebrate. This isn't a message that we are stronger or better than anyone else because we've made it to graduation. Some of our classmates started the year on track to be here among us today. However, they've had their education derailed and the completion of the degrees delayed due to circumstances outside of their control. I would like to acknowledge that today is their day too. I, and I hope you'll all agree with me, will be eager to celebrate with them a second time whenever they eventually graduate. During this time, remember the communities that supported you while you were here. The faculty, staff, parents, and friends who helped you get through your years at Grinnell. Remember that your community will be celebrating with you tomorrow. Tomorrow is graduation, but how will that change our lives? Most of us will wake up the day after tomorrow feeling completely the same. You won't be any taller or smarter or braver than you were the day before because physically walking across a stage or shaking hands with the college president or draping a yard or a meter of colored cloth around your shoulders is not an achievement. Everything that you've achieved in college has already happened. Graduation is a way for the college and your community to acknowledge what you've achieved, and that's great. But you don't need anyone else's permission to feel proud of yourself. No one and nothing else is allowed to dictate what you're worth in this coming time. Why is today different from any other day? Today, we celebrate each other and the experiences we shared. Tomorrow, we'll receive slips of paper that will say, we've finished a liberal arts education. We'll dress up, and everything will be very official and symbolic and meaningful, and it will be another ending. Maybe it will be stressful. Maybe you'll feel smothered. Maybe you'll feel lonely. Maybe right now you're sitting here or at home feeling anxious about tomorrow and worried about your future. And you can't possibly think of how graduation can feel like a celebration this year. I've never graduated college before, but I have dealt with anxiety, so I can share what I do when I get anxious. Wherever you are in the world today, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. So breathe in. And breathe out. <sighs> Tomorrow, Grinnell College will try their best to honor us in the time and effort we've put into earning our degrees. But today, we have the opportunity to honor ourselves. And I urge all of you to take it. Focus on today. Celebrate. Try to do something fun. Talk with your classmates who you may be seeing for the last time. If you're not here on campus, reach out to them and make them feel like they're a part of the celebration as well. Smile, laugh. Connect with people and feel the support of a community that has been rooting for you and is still rooting for you as you move on to the next phase of your life. And somewhere in the midst of all the ceremonies and endings, take a moment to acknowledge this academic milestone and personal achievement. Congratulations, class of 2021. We did it! Welcome, I'm Claudia Beckwith, class of 1977 and a member of the Grinnell College Alumni Council. 
The Alumni Senior Awards honor graduate student, graduating seniors who best exemplify the Grinnell spirit and to whom the class will continue to look for leadership as they become the newest members of the alumni community. Seniors were nominated for the award by their class of 2021 peers. The Grinnell College Alumni Council, along with a committee of alumni, faculty, and staff, selected two graduating seniors to receive the 2021 awards. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to tell you about our esteemed recipients. Avery Bennett. Our first recipient is a confident and well-respected leader in the Grinnell College physics community. She is known for her drive to get the most she possibly can out of any experience presented to her. Each semester, she put together a new list of commitments and challenges for herself. Some of the items on her list were, take as many classes as the college's registrar will allow, serve on administrative committees and in student groups, work jobs in the campus student center, the physics department, and the division of student affairs. She also has mentored her peers in both formal capacities and informal settings. Additionally, she has served as an ambassador for the STEM career community and as a curriculum intern in inter intercultural affairs. Our honoree also regularly collaborates with other student leaders in helping them realize the impact of their voice. She has developed an artful ability to address concerns respectfully and to approach collaboration thoughtfully so as to meet the needs of all parties involved. Her critical lens, matched with her humanistic compassion, makes her an emerging leader. For embodying the best parts of being a Grinnellian, it is my pleasure to present an Alumni Senior Award to Avery Barnett, Class of 2021. Oscar Buchanan. Our next award recipient is deeply connected to the issues within our society. He is determined to play a role in understanding community needs and working towards both process change and policy change. He founded and led the Grinnell United Activism Collective, a forum for collaborative student activism with the premise of, we are stronger together. Growing up in Denver, he was observant of the changing landscape of his urban neighborhood. He is interested in working as a city government urban planner to help build more resilient communities within the most vulnerable city neighborhoods. This recipient is a math and history major and completed a concentration in policy studies. He has served as treasurer of the Student Government Association and during 2019 to 2020, this student co-led the SGA Task Force on Student Belonging, which examined difficult subjects such as attrition rates, mental illness, and socioeconomic isolation. By nature, our honoree is adept at managing problems. His fascination with knowledge provides him with perspectives on many things, and nothing is more exciting to him than bringing information, factors, reasons, and causes together to comprehend the situation and form a conclusion or action steps. For his dedication to strengthening the Grinnell and broader communities, we are proud to honor Oscar Buchanan, Class of 2021.
Hello, everyone. My name is Molly Camp, and I am a member of the class of 1996. I moved back to Grinnell almost nine years ago now, so I've spent more time in Grinnell as an alum than I did as a student. I'm excited that you will soon become a part of this wonderful community of supportive and engaged alumni. I'm here today to present the Lori Ann Schwab Prize for Community Service to two graduating seniors. This prize recognizes the spirit and memory of Lori Ann Schwab and her commitment to making the world a better place. Lori was a member of the class of 1995 who died from a tragic illness while studying abroad in London. Presenting this award is particularly meaningful to me because Lori was a dear friend of mine while I was a student here. It's been more than 25 years since Lori died, and as time passes, I worry that I'm forgetting more and more details about her and our friendship. And since my memory for details has never been very strong, um, I do remember what I felt like back then, though. Lori was quiet and kind, and with her I felt safe and cared for, respected and loved. When she died, I discovered she gave those feelings to many others on this campus. Beyond words, what really does Lori's spirit and memory justice are the actions of students who have received this award. Their work has reflected Lori's passions, art, women's advocacy, and working with children. The Lori Ann Schwab Prize for Community Service is an $1,800 award given annually by Grinnell College to two seniors to recognize their service to the campus and local community during their time here. I was honored to be the first recipient of this award in 1996, and I'm happy that now, 25 years later, I can serve on the selection committee and now present the award to members of the class of 2021. So, the idea of trying to make the world a better place locally and globally is always on the mind of our first Schwab Prize recipient. A native of Greenwood, Virginia, this graduating senior has found a home at Grinnell where he has committed to helping many diverse community causes. He said to contribute to the betterment of a community, to rebuild resilient rural towns, and empower people to be free members of a truly thriving community has become central to who I am. In 2019, this recipient took the lead in proposing a student project house based on the theme of raising food to be shared with the campus community. He conceived the idea for a farmhouse and recruited a dozen other students to join him in creating a large, fully operational vegetable garden. The 5,000 square foot garden has cultivated more than 40 varieties of vegetables, fruit, and flowers. During the pandemic, the community garden has produced food for a free farm stand, which is open to residents in Grinnell and surrounding areas. In 2020, this recipient founded the first Midwestern chapter of Herbicide Free Campus, a nationwide student-led movement to engage students with groundskeepers to collaboratively create and maintain beautiful, non-toxic spaces on campus. He also became co-owner of Grinnell Farm to Table, a small nonprofit business with 19 local producers and 100 customers. In November, our honoree was elected to a four-year term on the Powishi County Soil and Water Conservation District Commission. He serves as a liaison between local farmers and government organizations to implement creative and locally relevant conservation plans. This student also has excelled in his academic pursuits. An anthropology major, he did a summer map working with the college's dining services to include more locally sourced food in the dining hall. His senior, his senior thesis analyzed existing and potential role for food hubs in the area's local food system. Please join me in congratulating Tommy Hexter as a recipient of the Lori Ann Schwab. Um, before we move on to the next recipient, Tommy would like to share a few words. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Molly. Um, it is such a distinct honor to be remembered in the light of Lori's legacy, especially, and to have that award given by you. Um, I just can't say how special that is. Um, it's a tradition with the Lori and Schwab Award to give a portion of the cash prize to a community organization. Uh, I've chosen to donate $500 to Local Foods Connection. Um, which is an organization that connects high-quality CSA shares 
uh, local food boxes with low-income families in the Grinnell community. Uh, it's been such an honor being here. I'd say this award is more of a reflection of Grinnell's ability to craft community members um, than my own. You know, what I came in here with was that I like pizza rolls, and, and I'm leaving with, you know, uh, this award. So, so thank you all, and I cannot wait to see what all of, all of you wonderful leaders in the class of 2021 go out and do in communities around the world. And if you're ever back in Grinnell, give me a shout. I'll be here. Take care, y'all. Our next Schwab Prize recipient always has been drawn to the hands-on, people-based work that involve a significant amount of direct contact. This stems from her parents' professions. Her dad is a mechanic and her mom is a legal aid attorney. When a community member of their rural New Mexico town has a problem, she has witnessed her parents use tools at their disposal to fix it. She has followed suit the past four years here at Grinnell. Our honoree has worked since 2018 as a sexual assault peer advocate in the college's crisis intervention services. She provided direct support for survivors of sexual violence and assault via a 24-hour hotline. She also organized events and initiatives to create campus dialogue about sexual respect. Though being an advocate has become increasingly challenging over time, the work is close to her heart. It reminds her of what her mom told her. If you are really fighting hard for someone, you feel a piece of their suffering in you. This student also volunteered for Connecting Grinnellians, where as a special project manager, she instituted a resource closet at Davis Elementary School in Grinnell. She helped convert a storage closet at the school into a free store stocked with clothing, school supplies, and food. Additionally, she spent last summer as an AmeriCorps member focused on youth literacy. She said the following about the experience. I learned as much from the kids as they could have possibly learned from me, and the work has brought me immense joy. Working and making these connections to Grinnell has been especially valuable to me because this community has hosted me for the past four years, which is a service I could never fully repay. She continued with AmeriCorps in October, taking a position as grant writer and outreach coordinator for Link Grinnell. She updated and maintained the organization's website and helped secure over $23,000 in grants. A sociology major at Grinnell, she has served in a number of student government association roles, including vice president of student affairs and all campus events coordinator, where she organized the scheduling of over 100 campus events in 2019. So please join me in congratulating Amelia Zernig as a recipient of the next Laurie Ann Schwab Prize. Thank you, Molly. Um, it truly is such an honor to have been nominated by my peers and to be receiving this award, um, especially because I know so many of us in the class of 2021 have dedicated a lot of time and energy to serving our community, both on campus and in Grinnell and our communities, our home communities, as many as they are. Um, following the tradition of the Schwab Award, I'm donating a portion of my award to Link Grinnell where I spent last summer and it's an organization that provides childcare services and after school support for especially essential workers, but the entire community. So thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I first want to give uh, a shout out to Arzu. Uh, she was actually going to originally introduce Sakatan, um, but because of a medical issue, she's unable to be on stage today. Um, she's sending her love and appreciation for her best friend. Um, my name is Gyan. Um, I feel like I heard tales of Sakatan before I actually met him in person because as a transfer student, I didn't really start Grinnell with the rest of you all. I came in my second year. 
Um, and Saktan immediately made an effort to reach out and make me feel welcome in what was originally a new and unfamiliar place. <coughs> oh, sorry. Sak is someone who has jumped in headfirst to Grinnell. Uh, he's helped to foster our campus music community and even started a band. Um, as a leader in student government, Sakhtan has worked to foster a more inclusive, compassionate, and thoughtful student community. But despite all of his accolades and his leadership positions, Sak is a funny, down-to-earth, thoughtful, unpretentious guy. It's my great pleasure to introduce my friend, Sakhtan Anand, to the stage. Thanks, Gyan. Um, also, thank you to Arzu um, and Janelle and the entire commencement committee for putting this event together. First of all, to all my fellow seniors, congratulations. We did it. If I were to use one word to highlight my Grinnell experience, I'd pick community. And I'm sure many of you would agree. Community has underscored everything that I've done at Grinnell, and more importantly, it has been the reason why. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam is a Sanskrit quote that means the whole world is one family. My father, who can't be here today, has often repeated this to my brother and I, and I feel like my Grinnell experience has made the meaning in the saying apparent to me in the way students from diverse backgrounds engage on the back of multiple different cultures, languages, and life experiences to work together to achieve amazing things. The international student community plays an important role in encouraging the tolerance, empathy, and cultural awareness that this brings, and it has been a pillar of support for me. I especially want to give a huge shout out to the three-person OISA team that does so much for us. Another important community to me has been the music community at Grinnell, which has given me a lot to be grateful for. It has been a vehicle for my passion, for bringing people together, and has supported my personal endeavors as a musician and organizer. These two communities are just some of the places where I met and learned from my peers. And as with me, each of you have been part of building, engaging in, and sustaining communities at Grinnell. And for that, I want to thank you all. You have done the incredible work of helping in the discovery and formation of each other's identities and in cultivating communities of understanding and support for each other. The truly priceless gift of our education has been the people we have shared it with, and I hope you all take this time to honor those relationships. In thinking about life after Grinnell, I wanted to share some thoughts on the idea of paying it forward. To me, paying it forward is investing in the happiness and success of others. It isn't paying a debt back. That looks different for different people based on circumstances, values, and debt. Simply put, I think giving back to the community, any community, makes a huge difference. It could be a prospective student, someone in your workplace, a roommate, a friend, a relative, or a community member. Doing what you can is doing more than enough. I know that the saying is that it is that the, thought, the thought that counts, but Grinnellians are measured by our actions. It feels redundant to say all of this because I know that you're all going into the world to do just that. But I hope that we can all think of community, service, and support as guiding principles of our lives as we prepare to become citizens of the world. I know my speech was a bit short, but I've always felt more comfortable playing music on a stage. So I would like to use this time to do just that and play a song called Home about Grinnell. Black, the rain is white the Grass is greener on my side 
quietness, it's killing me. And I can't breathe, the air's too clean. I don't know if I belong. And I keep telling myself, heart is where and my home is. And I can't tell them apart. But I'm holding on and looking up for now They say Home is where your heart is And it's tearing me apart So I'm letting go and looking back One last time Reminiscing, I'm in the past Falling flat and springing back and I can't tell where I've gone wrong Maybe it's time to just move on oh, 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 oh. The sky is clear and the stars are neat The cold is warm and the corn is sweet Love for here is growing strong A few more years I might belong I've got this feeling that says Heart isn't where my home is And I see it now I'm sure So I'm moving on and waking up and how Cause So I'm letting go and looking back one last time. Thanks. Hard act to follow. Um, uh, my name is Abby, and I'm honored to be here today to introduce one of my favorite faculty members here at Grinnell, Professor Manessa Cummins. I remember being from Chicago, meeting a lot of alumni from Grinnell, and the one name I always heard when I asked a class that I had to take was anything with Professor Cummins. Thus, I took tutorial with her, which was an amazing experience. And I remember walking into one of our earlier classes, probably first or second week, Having skipped reading the catalog of the ships in the Iliad, which for those of you who haven't read it, is 10 pages of ships, and that's like it. And I thought I was so smart, because I had skipped part of the reading and like gotten my homework done early, and I was definitely not the only one that did that. <laughs> I remember her face upon finding out that plenty of us had not read this catalog, and she started by giving this really disappointed look, which for anyone who's seen it knows, you never want to be on the other end of it again. <laughs> She then chose to walk us through the importance of the chapter and how it all mattered, connecting the dots between things, and it really highlighted how something as mundane as a giant list really was important. Her ability to make the mundane relevant and connect classics to students' lives has stuck with me ever since this class. I loved classics before I came to Grinnell, but Professor Cummins really showed me why classics is relevant still today. She's been an amazing mentor through my time at Grinnell, always there to push me to do better and more than I ever thought myself capable of. I'm grateful to have been able to have her as a professor and mentor during my time here at Grinnell, and I'm honored to be introducing Professor Manessa Cummins. Dear graduates, those few here gathered today in the field house, those who are not with us, 
but are scattered around the world and watching online. Thank you for the invitation to speak to you today. You can tell I'm deeply honored. My time is short, so I'll be direct. I taught most of this year from an empty classroom in an empty HSSC in order to have the use of a blackboard behind me to write on. Also, I just felt more natural in a classroom setting. I looked into my laptop screen every day and strained to detect from the little tiles who my students were, what they were feeling, how much they were learning, and what they needed. And I strained to overcome my own feelings of inadequacy. It was tough. Then one day, in spring one, it got tougher. I was teaching an independent study in ancient Greek with two students. Adam and Ray. We met on Tuesdays and Fridays from 5 to 6.30 p.m. in winter darkness because it was the only time we were all free. We struggled because Ray's internet connection was weak and his video cut in and out, or we kept losing him altogether. Finally, it was bad enough that we reluctantly turned off our video in order to maintain the audio connection. As Adam and Ray disappeared, I listened in fear and frustration, fear that our little enterprise would be swallowed up in a darkness like the darkness outside the large windows of my classroom in HSSC. I listened, and then miraculously, Adam was talking. At first, I just listened in relief to the timbre of his voice, to the cadence of his words. His voice was a bulwark against the isolation and failure that was swallowing me up. I marveled that he was still out there and that we were still connected. Only then did I listen for his thought, his meaning. Then I began to worry about Ray. If Adam was talking, then Ray was silent and invisible. I feared that he, like an astronaut untethered on a spacewalk, might just float away into the darkness if I didn't reel him in. I called on Ray, and he was right there. And what he said revealed that he had understood everything Adam said and that he had a thought in response. I sighed. We were OK. Superficially, we were at our lowest ebb without anything but an audio internet connection. But in fact, it was our finest hour because we would not be beaten. And that hour stretched into days Usually without video, we read and translated ancient Greek. We went over text after text, trying to analyze the Greek understanding of human suffering and human agency. And no, we didn't speak of the obvious parallel to the pandemic. By our focus on the ancient Greeks, we put a thumb in the eye of today's pandemic. Today, I don't need to see Adam and Ray to know that they are right here with me in spirit. Because I swear that in spring one, I got a real education about human connection and community. And here's what I learned. A community is a group of people who above all else refuse to be separated from one another. A community is a group of people who listen, truly listen to one another, not just in order to reply or instruct or refute or rebuke, 
but in order, in the first place, to simply see and hear one another. A community is a group of people who work stubbornly and joyously toward a common goal in which they believe and on which they will not give up. This is what I hope for all of us going forward, that we have the same desire and patience to build back our communities in person. I hope for all of us to truly see and listen and value one another. If we do this, then we can knit up the tattered fabric of our lives and our communities, and maybe our world will heal just a little better too. And since I'm aware of the irony of giving an address about the need for listening, I'll stop now. Godspeed to every member of the graduating class of 2021, wherever you are. Thank you. I was so scared I was going to trip on my jeans. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Olivia Willem, and this is Terry Heath. Um, and we are very honored to introduce our next and final student speaker, who is a teammate and very close friend of ours. Um, throughout her four years at Grinnell and beyond, she has demonstrated a commitment to fighting for her friends and her community and putting her heart and soul into everything that she does. Catherine is truly one of the kindest human beings. She's so reliable, extremely intelligent, and also one of the most resilient people we know. A person you can always count on to be there for you at any time of the day. We are honored to present the next student speaker, Catherine Stetner. Thanks for that intro. I love you guys. I knew you were going to make me cry. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, we almost did it, and it is a huge honor to be with you all here today. Um, I hope if you're not in this field house with us, you are relaxing and watching with your friends and family as we speak up here. And as all of our speakers have said, this has really been a year. Whether you're graduating tomorrow or in a couple months, it is a massive accomplishment to be here. Every timeline is impressive, and we've really endured a lot. So as we venture off into this summer soon, I hope you can all take some much-deserved time to slow down and recharge. So often in our world, in Acronel, we are constantly looking to the next thing, the next assignment, the next semester, the next steps post-graduation. But I hope today and in the next couple days, we can really look right here and right now and just slow down. I'm sure many of you have struggled in the last year, but you have also found huge moments of joy and so, saw how much our relationships, even virtually, have sustained us in ways we never knew possible. I know COVID scattered us all over the world, but my Grinnell family was there for me every step of the way. And I've really learned that it is not the space, but the people that make you feel at home. So I want you to feel that gratitude and enjoy these couple next days, weeks, years, and months, and take as much time as you need. Slowing down and listening to yourself and your body is a beautiful thing. But I also hope once you've all gotten there and taken those deep breaths, really slept in, uh, we can realize that it is time to get to work. And I don't mean get a job. I mean, you can do that if you want. I don't have a job yet. Um, but I mean, we can alter and change the world that we have seen crumble around us this year and frankly for many years before. Writer Arundhati Roy has called this pandemic and the social unrest 
and reckoning with white supremacy around us, a portal between one world and the next. She says that, quote, in the midst of this ter terrible despair, it offers us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. I've thought about her ideas a lot in the last couple months. I've thought about how there are so many ruptures throughout the globe in this past year and throughout history, and how people before us have strode to make changes. But today, we need an absolute overhaul of almost everything around us. And as more and more people have vaccines and our communities start to open up little by little, we cannot forget the trauma and brutality of the year behind us. I think part of slowing down is looking backward as much as we look forward and really witnessing what it took to get here. It is really tempting to say that we should go back to normal that existed before, but that normal was good for only a tiny experience of the world. And for most of us at differing degrees, that normal was unbearable. We are living in a moment where we can take advantage of rupture and mobilize, organize, and look for large structural change. There is so much work to be done, and we are leaving college and entering the world in this portal. As Sakatan said before, I want us to rethink what it means to go into the world and pay it forward. We can all do this in dramatically different ways, but the world cannot return to what it was before. We must push and imagine a different future together. I'm going to miss you all and this community so much, but I truly cannot think of a better people to continue this fight. Thank you so much and congrats. Thank you, Catherine, for that very beautiful and eloquent speech. I now have the honor of presenting our first honorary class member whose joy, optimism, and fervor of her life were very much needed throughout our four years. For those of you who may not know, honorary class members are nominated for their commitment to the college community as well as their embodiment of our shared values. And in this way, she embodies them perfectly. I nominated her just for these, her dedication to others, her resilience, and more than this, her desire for more. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, she uh, also attended a private liberal arts college, Teal College in Western Pennsylvania, receiving her degree in English and teaching. From there, she received her master's from the University of Missouri and Columbia in public administration. From here, she worked in various public uh, and professional sectors, public health advocacy, managing grants for the uh, Center for Disease Control. And now she has wound up uh, in Grinnell College Dining Services um, and showing her smiling face every day. This is also a reason that I nominated her is because almost all, I'm almost positive most all of us have seen her exchanged two words with her in passing, or perhaps a, a pleasant and unexpected conversation on days when we needed it, on days when we were missing home, on days when we were unsure or frustrated about the prospect of planning out our entire future in a short four years. She was always there. She was always there with a trivia fact, a kind smile, um, or some kind words when you needed it. And for this express purpose, I have the distinct honor and pleasure of uh, introducing our first honorary class member, Ms. Marianne Ronan, the cherry checker from D Hall. Everybody give her a hand, please. <laughs> oh, please come to the stage. <laughs> oh, if you can't, I'll bring it. I'm going to bring the uh, degree to her. Oh, not degree, it's a certificate. But thank you all, and thank you, Marianne.
<clears throat> Hi. I'd like to speak on behalf of all the international students in this committee and um, introduce someone who is very special and has been very important to us throughout all our four years at Grinnell. She has been a pillar for all international students and has helped each and every single one of us individually. In fact, without her help, her calm voice, her calm presence, even if the, in the most stressful times, I don't think any of us would have done it. Actually, I know none of us would have done it. Um, from filing and signing an unearthly amount of I-20s <laughs> to answering her phone anytime, any day from all across the, wo the world to providing us with a beautiful smile every single day, for us, she has done it all. Brenda Strong, your kindness, attention, and generosity is something that will remain with us forever, and I can assure you that not a single one of us will ever, ever forget you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I'd like to provide you with an honorary class membership if you'd like to accept it. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael. As you can tell, I'm, in, I'm an international student from Brazil. And I have to pl the pleasure to introduce our third ordinary class member. We all have heard before that Grinnell is in the middle of everywhere. And that's not only because Grinnell is strategically located in a place with easy access to everywhere in this country, right? But also it's because of Grinnell because Grinnell becomes the home for people from all around the globe. Grinnell is in the middle of everywhere because a piece of everywhere comes to Grinnell. And all of us, and I hope I'm not wrong when I say all of us, value international voices, cultures, and, and stories. At the same time, there are some people in this college who practice the three Gs, Glo Go Global Grinnell. It's the idea that not only welcoming everywhere on this campus is not enough. We want to go everywhere and learn with first-hand experiences. Our next ordinary class member is one of them. She's always ready to, sh ready to share enthusiastically her extraordinary memories from when she went to France as an undergraduate. And she hopes all of us have a great time somewhere else during our time at Grinnell. Her job is usually to encourage students to leave, to get out of our comfort zones, to explore new places, new cultures, new people. However, her interaction with the class of 2021 was slightly different. When the pandemic started last year, many of us were scattered around the globe. And she was one of the people who were working around the clock to make sure all of us would be back, safe and healthy. We thank her for all the effort she put in to help us during such stressful times. This is one of the reasons why we would like to recognize our director of off-campus off study, Alicia Stanley, as an ordinary class member for the Grinnell College of 2021. Besides working to ensure students have an international fulfilling experience, Alicia is also completing her fourth year here at Grinnell College. So she's also graduating with us. Uh, now, I invite everyone to welcome, with a warm round of applause, Alicia Stanley. So it turns out sitting all the way over there is not good when you do a 
clockwise rotation. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Tucker. Thank you all for joining us here or virtually. Um, and as I have done any other speech in the past, I have not prepared. Um, so I just kind of speak off the cuff. And for any faculty in attendance, I would never do this on an assignment. Um, <laughs> but uh, so. Uh, as many students have spoken today of community is a big part of what Grinnell means both on our campus and in the larger town city as a whole, uh, there is nowhere that I would think of as a kind of cornerstone of community uh, beyond the bounds of our campus than Saints Rest Coffee House, uh, which is usually the first thing that I will tell anybody about uh, if they are visiting or if they are thinking of coming here uh, among the seniors I have interviewed. Uh, through our admissions office. And I think walking into Saints Rest, you have just this eclectic mix of, you know, furniture, jewelry, artwork. Every time I'm there, I think, should I buy one and take home with me? And then realize I couldn't fit it in my car, uh, the big pieces at least. So, you know, I, I think community, as many people have spoken of, uh, is something that here you see can never be truly perfected. Um, you know, we're kind of this big mix of people from all over. No part of a community kind of will ever, you know, you can always improve it, um, but no community and no small piece of a community such as this small coffee house uh, can ever be proved irrelevant to anybody. Um, so it is just with my, or it is, it is my great pleasure uh, to give our fourth and final uh, honorary class membership of this afternoon to Sam Cox. Hello, my name is Creed McClellan, and I want to thank everyone for joining us here today, um, both the handful of people that were able to be here in person, as well as everyone watching online. And of course, congratulations to those of us graduating tomorrow, again, including those who are joining us for an in-person commencement and those who will be watching online. We have heard from some incredible voices today. And before we all get on with our afternoons and evenings, I want to touch back on some of the main themes that were brought to the table. Professor John Garrison brought, to, brought us into conversation by noting the uncertain world that we find ourselves entering into. Obuchi touched on the importance of community, both the larger Grinnell College community as well as the smaller pockets of togetherness that we created with our peers. She also reminded us of the many members of our class and community that will not be sharing um, the experience of an in-person commencement with many of us tomorrow and to make sure that we remember them. Sakatan encouraged us to bring our strengths gained from our communities we were part of in Grinnell um, out into the larger world. Professor Manessa Cummins also touched on the incredible power of community spaces and togetherness even when we are apart. And Catherine Stender um, noted the great strength and resilience that it required to get through not only the last year, but the last four. And she urged us to take that learned experience to make the world around us a better place for all. We covered a lot of ground this afternoon, but I think there is some main takeaway here. The two main motifs that shone through, for me anyways, were community or togetherness and resilience. In our last few days and hours as current Grinnell students, let us be grateful for and celebrate the communities that have supported us through our time at Grinnell, four years which required great strength and endurance. And as we move out into what Professor Garrison called an uncertain world, let us continue to stay connected to fellow Grinnellians while also finding our own powerful and resilient pockets of community and togetherness wherever we find ourselves in the world post-graduation. As Abuchi noted, tomorrow many of us will be wearing our fine clothes and commencement robes. Um, there are a few logistical reminders that I'd like to cover just to make sure that tomorrow's commencement ceremony goes smoothly. First, um, a few notes regarding guests. 
For those of you who have guests attending the ceremony, they must have their red wristbands to get in. I will say it again at the end because it's very important. <laughs> um, they will not be allowed onto the field um, without their wristbands. They will also need their wristbands to receive their box lunch in Harris after the commencement ceremony. Guests will not be allowed onto the football field until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so they can get there early, but you will not get prime seating just because you get there at 6 a.m. Parking will be available in lots located around the perimeter of campus and on side streets, um, but unlike in years past, there will not be shuttles offered from local hotels. Campus buildings, so for the purposes of commencement, we're really talking about the Bear and Harris, um, but all other buildings as well, will be locked. Portable restrooms will be available and are located on site. I believe there are some on the north end of the football field and over by Harris. Now, some crucial logistics for us, the graduates. We will need to be on the east side of the Bear, so on the road or sidewalk in between the Bear and the tennis courts by 9.30 tomorrow morning. Those of you who know me know that I will be there earlier than that, and I encourage you all to do the same. Once there, you will be asked to line up with your division you are walking with in alphabetical order by last name. There will be signage and assistant marshals there to direct you and answer any questions. Once everyone is there and in order, order we will be led around the Bear to our seats. When we get to the row we will be sitting in, we must fill every seat. There are only the right number of seats for the people walking, um, so don't leave any seat empty. When it is time for us to line up to walk across the stage, Evelyn Freeman, who's an assistant marshal, will come and get us row by row. Please follow her directions if there is any confusion. As we proceed to the stage, you will pick up your diploma from the registrar. Um, from there, you will step to the side and take a photo with Life Touch, and you will then make your way onto the stage, which for those of us wearing heels is a ramp and not stairs, which I am very thankful for. There will be an X on the stage, um, and so you'll walk that as your name is read. Um, you can stop here and look at the photographer for your socially distanced photo with President Ann Harris. You will then continue across the stage, down the ramp, and circle back to your seat. You may remove your mask for photos while you walk across the stage, but please put it back on um, once you walk off the stage. Aside from when you're walking across the stage, we should be wearing masks at all times, um, as should any and all guests, even those who are fully vaccinated. Like I noted at the beginning, all guests must have their red wristbands um, to be admitted onto the field tomorrow morning. If you have any questions, feel free to ask fellow graduates or contact conference operations and events. I want to thank you one last time for coming, and I will see you all tomorrow morning for commencement. Thank you.